It is not very often where I take a headline that I've had no time to dig into and bring it right to one of my experts. It's because I want to be a little bit more prepared for these conversations. But given that Taylor here has 10 years on the street, is trained and certified uh, in all things trading and investing, I have to ask, Taylor, did you just see what Apple dropped this morning? <laughs> they dropped a bombshell. There is no other way to describe this, and this is not overstating it. So if you don't know what we're talking about here, Apple just announced a savings account. Yes, a savings account partnered up with Goldman Sachs uh, with a interest rate of 4.15%. That is 4.15%. I felt the reverberations all the way over here, as I'm sure you have. What does it mean? What happens next? Just wow. This is disruption at its finest right here. Uh, you look at Apple, you're talking about the largest company on the planet now entering a space that has been old school, stodgy banking for centuries and they are disrupting. I looked up right before this call just to make sure I was pretty sure I was right on this. JP Morgan Chase, largest bank in the US, 0.01% interest on their savings account. Bank of America, second largest bank in the US, 0.01%. So what is this, a, a 4,150 4, 4, time <laughs> multiple of what the largest banks on the planet are currently providing. And so we just went through earnings last week of JP Morgan. JP Morgan blew out earnings based on net interest margin. So what does that mean just for our viewers real quick? Net interest margin is the difference between what they're paying depositors, which is 0.01% and what they're able to lend out on the other end. That went up 49% from a year prior and caused them to have absolutely blowout earnings. Well, guess what? Apple's coming in and saying, you're, you're, you're yielding 0.01%. We're now going to provide 4.15%. What's that going to do to their deposits? Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I think there's, I think we got to talk about big bank, little bank. I think, I think what we've seen in the last 30 days, 40 days is regional banks flood big banks. We've also seen big banks after that lose money to mark money markets, gold, Bitcoin. Cash is moving like it's never moved before. And now Apple has come out and changed the game. I mean, you got to remember, Apple is beloved by, you know, Gen X, millennials, Gen Z, maybe not so much boomers and all of that, but they have the reputation, right? Pristine. And I can't imagine millions of dollars isn't already, if not billions of dollars, flooding to them right now. If this is already on your phone, which I, I read the press release, it'll be done via the phone. There's money moving there already. Correct. And I, I would argue that boomers aren't involved in that because my parents qualify as boomers and they both have iPhones. Right. Oh, cool. I mean, what percentage of the U.S. And, and all my aunts and uncles all have iPhones as well. And maybe we're an iPhone family, but we have no reason to be. We're not an affluent family by any means. Um, everybody trusts Apple. So banking is predicated on two things, trust and accessibility. You trust this device because you stare at it for three hours every single day is the average time watched on an iPhone, and it already has all of your information. So there you go. Trust, accessibility, check, check. And so there have been online savings accounts now that offer similar and even more competitive rates than that, but they're from names that people have never, ever heard of before. So the trust factor isn't there. The accessibility factor isn't there because you have to go input all of that information into a system that you're not really all that confident about.